This could literally be the most important programming language that exists. Let's talk about it. All right, so what if I told you there's a programming language that's in extremely high demand and also that job security for it is rock solid. And on top of that, there's not that much competition. All right, so the language that I wanna talk about is not the most popular programming language out there, but it might be the most important. And the reason is because a lot of systems depend on it. A lot of very important systems depend on it. And that is what matters. So yeah, you'll see the videos that I'll probably do on myself where we talk about the most popular programming languages and the languages that you should learn in 2024. And that's an important video to do, but that's not the topic of today's video. And the reason is because there's a significant amount of competition when it comes to some of the top programming languages like Python is one of the best. JavaScript is awesome. PHP, it powers the web. But the most important language, it's important for a reason. And we're talking about critical infrastructure all depend on this language. All right, so without further ado, the language is COBOL. COBOL is a language that was created in 1959 and it runs on mainframe computers developed by IBM and others, primarily IBM. Now, it's not a language that you're gonna hear about a lot. You might have heard about it over the past couple of years, but it's not one of the languages that top the charts of Stack Overflow surveys. And it's not one that you'll see typically in the top 10 programming languages that you should consider learning. And the reason is it's not really taught anywhere. It's a very old language and there's a bunch of modern languages that are easier to learn. But when we talk about the need to learn a specific programming language, when you talk about job security, when we talk about competition within the marketplace for a particular type of programmer, COBOL tops the charts. I mean, let's look at the type of systems that run COBOL code. We're talking about finance, we're talking about banking, we're talking about the ATM machines that you see everywhere. About 90% of them run on COBOL. Our banking systems run on COBOL. Wall Street runs on a lot of COBOL code. In fact, there's about 800 billion lines of COBOL code out there in production environments. Production environments. So when we think about how important it is to the financial system, we live in a capitalist society. Could you imagine if you don't have access to your banking data? Oh, that glare is significant. The sun is right in front of me. So could you imagine that? Now, what other systems run on COBOL? Let's talk about the government infrastructure. A significant amount of government entities and organizations run on COBOL as well. When you think about the Social Security Administration, yeah, that runs on COBOL. When you talk about a bunch of the different ways that government systems interact, COBOL code is one of the most dominant languages. All right, so now we just talked about finance and government run on COBOL. So those are two big industries right there. What else runs on COBOL? A lot of the code that runs healthcare is run on mainframe computers with COBOL code. Healthcare, I think we would all agree, is something that's uh, it's extremely important. Now what else? Utility companies. Utility companies and utility type organizations, a lot of that stuff has been around for years. A lot of that hardware has been around for years. The mainframe computers are made to last. And a lot of the code on that, again, is COBOL. All right, so we covered finance, we covered government, we covered healthcare, now we covered utilities. And ironically, a lot of retail runs on COBOL code as well. And those are just a few of the industries that use COBOL code, but I think that you can understand the fact that those industries are very important. Why haven't they updated their code? Why haven't they moved on to a more modern language like using C Sharp or using C++ or using Python or Java? Because those are good alternatives, right? Or using something like Rust. I think Rust will be a great opportunity, you know, to transition from COBOL code into a new modern language that is memory safe and considered safe by most. The reason is the amount of risk involved in migrating a code base, because you have to be able to translate that code from one programming language into another programming language. And if you know more than one spoken language, you know the difficulty in getting the same meaning across when you say something in English and you say something in Spanish, or if you say something in English and say something in Chinese or Russian or, or another language, whatever that language is. Getting the exact same meaning is not always easy. That's why there's translators and interpreters for spoken languages. And the same is true for programming languages. It's hard and very risky to take 
something so pivotal, so important as our finance industry, as our governmental databases and all of the different types of programs that are still using COBU code within our government infrastructure, our utility services, our healthcare industry, our retail industry, translating that or interpreting that into a new programming language from COBOL to say Rust or to or C sharp or any other language, that's a significant undertaking. And when we're talking about roughly 800 billion lines of code that is out there that's written in COBOL, obviously the vast majority of that is legacy code. So you would have to be able to one, learn the system, learn the, um, the way it was structured or the way the code worked and operated. And then you have to see how to properly translate that or interpret that into a new programming paradigm or a new programming language. And that is very risky because, again, if the finance industry goes down for even a moment, billions of dollars are lost. If the healthcare industry goes down, a lot of lives could be at risk. If, you know, our government infrastructure goes down, then we can have a national security issue. That is the reason why a lot of this code has not been translated or interpreted into another programming language. And that's why I think that considering the fact that the vast majority of COBOL programmers are aging out, they, you know, most of these programmers are probably by now 80 plus years old. And they probably just re-entered the game because over the past few years, there was such a high demand for them and there's very little in the way of new programmers coming to the marketplace with the skill set of knowing how to work with COBU code, with the legacy code. So you have this huge demand for programmers with a specific skill set on how to use this programming language, but you have very little supply of actual developers who know how to use COBU code. So this might very well be the most important programming language with the highest level of job security because I don't think that you know many companies are deciding to let go of their COBOL programmers. I mean, that would be a good survey to do, right? See how many programmers were let go within a particular language, you know, in terms of Python or PHP or JavaScript, um, C Sharp or C++ versus COBOL. See a percentage breakdown. That would be very interesting. Stack Overflow? Come on, put that as part of your survey. So I think job security for people who know how to code with COBOL is very strong. So it's a language I might decide to learn myself. And, you know, that's another thing. If you're a programmer and you have a skill set, you know, with knowing how to code or program with Rust or with C Sharp or with another programming language that can be compatible in terms of doing the same workload, handling the same workload as COBOL, it might make sense to learn how to use that programming language as well. Because think about it. If you know a more modern language, and if you learn an older language, you can get hired to be part of the process of translating or interpreting that code, refactoring that code, making it, making programs that function exactly the same way. So I think that would be a very highly in demand position. A person who knows how to code with a specific programming language and then incorporates COBOL as part of their resume. That would be in high demand and that would probably be very highly paid. I mean, the average COBOL developer right now is paid somewhere around $90,000 a year, but that number can be higher depending on your skill set. So that shows that it's a highly paid position as well. So I think that's an option. I think that, you know, if you're thinking about what programming language should I learn in 2024 and what would be in demand, because we know that companies tend to, when times get tough, let go of some of the positions that are probably needed the most, but also cost the most. And developer jobs, developer hours is very expensive. So when they're trying to save money, unfortunately, developers get let go. And we've seen that over the past couple of years where hundreds of thousands of developers have lost their job. But again, I don't see COBOL programmers losing their jobs they decide when they want to, you know, retire or when they want to take a break or they want to do something else. And sometimes father time takes them away for natural causes or whatever. Got to take a coffee break. So yeah, so I think that if you want to get into a very secure, highly paid, highly in demand programming job, COBOL is the way to go. Now, IBM did team up with the Linux Foundation in order to put out some material and some courses for free on how to program with COBOL. So those are definitely going to be something that I take a look at personally, because I think that might be a good opportunity for the future. But it's something you might want to take a look at too, because I think that 
there's a lot of opportunity there. Again, 800 billion lines of code, a shortage in the amount of programmers who know how to code using COBOL, and a high demand because of the risk involved with translating or interpreting from one language to another. So what's happening is a lot of businesses just hire whatever developers are currently out there to maintain their code base. And, you know, COBOL has been updated um, to be a little bit more modern over the past few years, but, you know, it's still not the most highly spoken about or highly taught programming language. You're not going to see a million YouTube videos on how to code with COBOL. So maybe after I learn it, if I learn it well enough, obviously, then maybe I'll create some videos on that. But, you know, there's other materials that I'm pretty sure done by better skilled programmers in terms of COBOL. So definitely take a look at those resources. So yeah, so I think that's the programming language you should consider learning for all the reasons mentioned earlier. You know, it's going to be a process, but apparently COBOL is supposed to be user friendly. And one interesting fact in researching for this video that I learned is that COBOL was created for non-programmers to be so easy to understand that it'll be for non-programmers. And this was done in 1959. So whenever they say our programmer jobs over, you know, is it going to be so easy for people to program that that actual programmers are not going to be needed anymore? This is something that's been talked about since 1959 in terms of making it so easy that the average person, you know, can program. And we've seen that, you know, nobody's coding in binary, right? Nobody's, you know, really using some of these older languages that were more performance because they they operated more closer to the operating system or to the to the hardware of the system itself. Nowadays, it's multiple layers of abstraction and multiple layers of languages that have been built upon other languages. So obviously C is like the mother of a whole bunch of different languages. You know, from there we get, we get PHP, we get JavaScript, we get a whole bunch of others. We get C sharp, we get C++, we get a whole bunch of languages from C. Or there have been spinoffs of C or have been created with C being some form of inspiration. So now we have programming languages that are easier for us to understand harder for the computer to understand. And that's why there's often a performance trade-off in terms of maintainability, readability, and performance with the system. The computers know zeros and ones. And soon with quantum computers, they'll know quibits. Um, But for now, they know zeros and ones. I can't even imagine trying to develop a real program with pure binary code. That would be... That would be interesting. But yeah, so definitely consider COBOL. Seems to be a highly in-demand language and a language that I think that'll provide job security for years to come. What are your thoughts? What do you think about learning such an old school program, such an old school programming language? Is it something you're interested in doing? Do you see the potential there? Sound off down below. Let me know what your thoughts are in terms of this programming language. All right, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification icon. If you have any thoughts, comments, or suggestions, leave them down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy coding.